Hey guys, Rachel from Right Visuals here and today I'm going to take you behind the scenes on a real estate shoot. I'm often asked how I actually film it, so I'm bringing along my GoPro and I'm going to shoot a point of view style. I'm going to put a commentary over the top saying what I'm doing and explaining why I'm doing it. I like to arrive 30 minutes earlier than planned with the real estate agent so I can grab some drone clips of the house. So as you can see here, I'm using the Mavic Air. I like to get a minimum of three different drone movements. Today was really windy though and the property was surrounded by power lines so I was very limited in the shots that I could get. Now it's time to get the establishing shots of the property. The gimbal I'm using is the Zion Crane 2. The camera I'm using today is the Sony A7S II and the Zeiss 16-35 lens. I'm shooting everything at 50 frames today because I like to slow my footage down. Not only because I prefer the look of slow-mo footage, but because it gives me more footage to play with. Whenever you're taking the establishing shots of the property, make sure there's nothing out the front of the house like bins or shoes, just tidy up the area to make it look cleaner. The sunlight was pretty harsh today so I improvised with the shots I captured at the front. I started off with a wide shot, showing off the front facade and then I moved closer to the undercover area and got another shot. The reason I did this is because in the original shot, the undercover area is a lot darker than I would have liked because of how harsh the sunlight was elsewhere. Once the agent rocks up, I head inside and I make sure all of the lights are turned on and the curtains are open to make sure the rooms are as bright as possible. I mic up the real estate agent with the Rode Filmmaker kit so he can do his piece to camera. In this shot, I'm using follow mode on my gimbal. Presentation, potential and location. Three attributes people look for when buying new property. One, Henty Court has all of that and more. Set in one of my favourite pockets in Keysborough, this one is extremely special. Let me take you through. Whenever I have someone reading from a script, I make sure they put the piece of paper out in front of them. This helps keep their head straight so their voice sounds normal. If they're looking down at a piece of paper, they will be talking directly into the mic and it may be too loud or it might get a little bit muffled. After this, I capture all of the clips with the real estate agent walking through the house. These shots all depend on the property. If the house has an ugly kitchen, I won't film a kitchen shot. If they have a really nice backyard, I'll make emphasis on that and get a few different backyard shots. This is where you've just got to play to the strengths of the house. And don't be afraid to move furniture out of the way if you need to get a shot. Majority of the shots I film will be in lock mode on the gimbal. This will help me slide left or right or forward or backwards. So I make sure I capture two to three different angles in each room if possible. Now because that A7S II is really bad at autofocus, I've worked out this little cheat and where I set my autofocus settings to wide, I hold down the shutter until it focuses on the area I want to be focused and then I switch over to manual focus so the camera doesn't hunt when I'm moving. I redo this every time I move into a new room. It's really easy and it's the fastest way I've been able to maintain focus throughout a video. Obviously in bedrooms sometimes you can't capture any more than one different angle. So that is where you would capture different movements. For example, sliding in from the left, sliding in from the right, slowly moving forward, slowly moving around a corner to reveal the room, panning down from the ceiling or panning up from the ground. Whenever you're trying to use slider shots, I would recommend that you put your gimbal into lock mode. Typically I can shoot majority of a house in one custom white balance and it's only normally bathrooms and kitchens that need a different white balance setting. When I first started filming real estate videos, I would change between all of the preset white balances in my camera. And so when I was editing it, all of the colors ended up being pretty different and so it didn't really look that nice. So what I like to do is change between one to two custom white balances to keep it fluid. I don't always rely on this, but you can always adjust it in post-production. One mistake I've made quite frequently is I'll start doing a shot for example and if I don't like the way that I'm moving or the angle I'll just stop halfway and I won't do it. 
that I don't like it. And I would advise you to just do it, just complete the whole movement, even if you're not really sure about it while you're filming it. Because I reckon in post-production, when you're looking for footage, you will look at that clip and you're like, oh, that looks so much cooler than I thought. And then you try and edit it and you can't because you wasted half of it. Right here, I'm figuring out how I want to do a speed ramp from the baby's room into the master bedroom to show that they are connected. Now the lighting in these rooms is quite different, so I've set my ISO to auto, but I set a minimum and a maximum range. I think I did about 200 minimum and 800 maximum. This way the rooms will be nicely lit and not over or underexposed when I change from one to the other. After I've captured some basic shots in each room, I changed the Tamron 28 to 75 to capture some detail shots around the place. It's best to capture details of things in the house that are going to be sold with the house. For example, air conditioners, utilities in the kitchen, but that doesn't mean that you can't just film the couches or the flowers in the corner of the room. They all add nice addition to the video. Presentation, potential and location. Three attributes people look for when buying new property. One, Henty Court has all of that and more. Set in one of my favourite pockets in Keysborough, this one is extremely special. Let me take you through. My favourite thing here is the proportions. The size of the rooms give you an incredible sense of space that is extremely rare to find. Offering four very good sized bedrooms, two bathrooms, multiple living areas and ample car accommodation. Positioned to capture the natural sunlight with spacious entertainment and gardens at the back, the residence is the ideal family home. In the centre of all the action, yet tucked away in a very quiet court location. You are mere footsteps from Parkmore Shopping Centre, easy access to various schools and a short commute to a selection of fine beaches. This is a great way to live.